Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use rapid tags to quickly generate tags for your YouTube videos. So if I go over to my web browser, I'm on the website called rapidtags.io. So if we go to the main website, this is what you're going to see when you see the main website. If you use the free tool here, click free tool, then you can type in a title for generating tags for your YouTube videos. So let's just say I type in something like, uh, let's do book keeping for small business, right? So that's the keyword that, I, or that's the title for my YouTube video that I'm going to be creating, for example. If I click search, it's going to generate all of these tags. And these tags are ones that are used popular or popular tags that people are going to be searching for potentially on um, YouTube. Uh, and adding these tags into your YouTube video will help to rank it a bit better in the in the in the actual results so if i go over to youtube and if i type in bookkeeping for small business you can see that's the first thing that's uh, been suggested here if i click that you'll see that my video that i created quite a long time ago i created this video i'm actually a web designer that's what i do for a business but uh, i like to share a lot of variety of knowledge on youtube so it'll be anything from bookkeeping to 3d animation to graphic design if you go to my channel we'll have a little look in a moment but you'll see there's quite a diverse range of content that i like to share it's really just a knowledge dump if i learn something new uh, if i think it's going to be useful for someone else then i go and make a video and i make a tutorial on that that particular subject but if we look at this particular video that i you know i created it quite a long time ago about five years ago this is really like the early days of me starting my youtube channel it's like the very very first few days uh, or first few months Let's just skip this. We'll leave this plane in the background. In fact, we'll pause it. Let's not make it distracting. Um, so this, this tutorial is really about bookkeeping. I'm a website design company. I run a website design business and I had to learn bookkeeping myself. And I thought, you know, if there's one thing that I could share at those early days when I started my YouTube channel, one thing that I knew a lot of people need to try and understand is bookkeeping. I like to teach myself and I, I built my own sort of methodology, my own my own method of doing bookkeeping and I showed that to my accountant and my accountant says yep that's exactly what you need to be doing that's a good way to do it so then I thought let me go and make a tutorial uh, showing how to do this um, and trying to share that knowledge with other people I expected to get maybe 100 maybe 200 views and in the end I got you know a quarter of a million views so, and I shared this knowledge not trying to make money from YouTube just trying to share knowledge impartially and I think the best videos on YouTube that make the best revenue return are the ones where you just do it in an impartial way where you just want to share your knowledge and not necessarily think about the the revenue that that video might generate later just try and share your knowledge and if you do it in that organic natural way you should get a uh, good retention on your video and it should do pretty well so this video did make quite a bit of money for me not a massive amount by any means not a life-changing amount believe it or not youtube don't pay out a lot in terms of views you know you only get a few cent for a view but if you uh, multiply that by 250,000 then you're going to start to generate some decent revenue for 44 minutes of your time right you'll make some decent money but obviously you have to grow your channel and make it um, a viable place for people to learn from so it doesn't have to be about learning it could be you know a wide range of things you could just be talking about politics you could be talking about anything on youtube that's why youtube is so good if you if you like something it doesn't even have to be business related right i run a website design company but if you go to my youtube channel you won't see a huge amount about website design there you'll see some stuff but i would say probably about 90 percent of it is not website related it's to do with other things that i understand a lot of things that i do in my business like social media 3d animation graphic design quite a wide range of subjects i will be doing a lot more stuff about website design but i've been so busy in my business building websites for my clients that the last thing I want to do at the end of the day when I'm going to go and make a YouTube video is to sit there and do more website stuff. For me, that just doesn't work for me. I want When I do stuff for YouTube, I want to be learning something new. I don't want to be repeating what I've just spent eight hours doing during the day, right? I want to go and learn some new things. So I'm learning 3D animation, Blender stuff, Photoshop, all these other uh, assets of knowledge. And when I learn those things, I want to share that knowledge with other people. Whether those videos get lots of views or not, 
it doesn't really bother me because nine times out of ten one of my clients at some point in time is going to ask me how do i do this on facebook or how do i do this on youtube or how do i do x y and z and if i've got a video that i can send to them rather than trying to explain to them then that saves me a lot of time and i get a few more views on my youtube channel because now my clients or my customers are going to youtube to watch my videos to explain how to do certain things um, rather than me repeating myself right so the tags that I've taken from here, I've copied them and I've placed them here, you can see, right? And then I've optimized these tags. Now I'm gonna show you another tool. I'm gonna to go through this other tool in more detail. But if I click on edit video here, we're gonna go and edit this particular video that I uploaded quite a long time ago. And there's another tool. So imagine if I went to rapid tags, I copied these, I copy them, and then I go over to here and I just paste them into here, right? I can just paste them. I can press control V and now you can see they're all being pasted into here. Now you can only have a certain amount of tags, right? Up to 500 words. Uh, and obviously I've got 900 and something here. That's way too many. I'm just going to refresh this page to get rid of them. I don't want to save that. You can't save it to be fair. I'm just going to reload the page so it loads up the original tags. Now there's another tool called TubeBuddy. And what TubeBuddy does is, um, I'll go through this tool in a separate tutorial because it's quite, not complex, but it's quite a lot to explain. But TubeBuddy is showing me in these green circles where this video ranks for in the YouTube search results. So you can see bookkeeping training, position three, invoice tracking, position three, bookkeeping tutorial, position three, small uh, bookkeeping for small business tutorial, position three. You can see bookkeeping training YouTube, right? And some of them don't rank. The ones that don't rank don't have a number next to them. So I could remove a few of these and replace them with other ones that do rank higher and that will help to get more traffic to this particular video. This one is quite old so the, the traffic, what I found on YouTube is after a period of time your traffic will start to drop on certain videos because YouTube at the end of the day it can't just display one video forever long to uh, YouTube viewers. It needs to give other people a chance to get their content out there. It wouldn't be very fair if this video uh, for ever long will always rank position one in, in the YouTube search results. That wouldn't be very fair for other people that are creating bookkeeping tutorials and they want to try and get some traffic to their um, tutorial, especially if they're accountancy or something like that, or bookkeeping uh, business. They deserve to rank their, their videos quite high in the search engines as well if they put effort in and if they make good content. So if they make good content and they, and they get the right keywords in there, uh, the tags in here and another little tip for you is when you get these tags in here you also want to try and mention a few of them in the actual description as well and also in the title because if you mention the tag in the title like bookkeeping here then you're mentioning small business bookkeeping here and you write a little bit of informative content don't spam out your content write some informative stuff maybe you'll link to the other tutorials here you can see bookkeeping tutorial written here three times but it's linking to the three different parts of this tutorial because there's three parts and then you've got a little bit about subscribing and you've got a couple of keywords down here that will help to rank this this, this particular video high, higher in the search engines, right? And then make a nice thumbnail, bookkeeping for small business, invoice tracking part one, maybe put a little graphic there, make it look nice, tell them what software they're using, they're going to be using OpenOffice um, spreadsheets. I use, the, uh, I use OpenOffice because you can download that for free and you can... Um, use that tool for free to do the, follow this bookkeeping tutorial rather than something like Excel. Although I did create a separate one for Microsoft Excel users as well, a separate video about bookkeeping, but using Excel only. So rapid tags is a great way to get some tags um, to quickly generate them and then to copy them and then to paste them into your tags here. But I would say that you need another tool called TubeBuddy and that will tell you where these particular keywords or tags are ranking in the search engine. So if you see a lot of them with high values, or really I should say low values, the lower the value, the better it is, right? So three is good, 14 is not so great, right? Invoice tracking system, 14, that means it's 14 positions down in the search engine results on YouTube. So I may remove that one, but I've got other ones here that don't have any, um, they're not ranking anywhere in the top, uh, let's say 50 or 60 results, right? So I might remove this one and find another one that ranks better in the uh, for the tags for this particular video. And imagine if you've got 500 videos now on your channel. I've got 500 videos on my channel now. I've been doing lots and lots of video content on a regular basis. So now I can go back through all of my other videos. And what I tend to do is load the video up, launch it on the search, uh, launch it on YouTube, and maybe come back and look at that video in three or four days time. Because it takes a bit of time for YouTube to, 
work out where it wants to position this video in the search engine results. It won't happen instantaneously, right? So if we go back here, let's go back to the videos here. You can see all the videos that I've created. Uh, and I normally try and load or launch at least one video every few days, sometimes one a day, sometimes I'll do four on the same day. So it's a bit random in terms of, well, it's not random. I try and do at least one a day if I can. If I have the time, if I don't, then maybe I'll miss a few days, maybe the weekends I won't bother. But um, during the week, I try and do at least one video a day. And it won't be that long. Some of them are quite long, like 40 minutes. Some of them are half an hour, 20 minutes and so forth. Um, but once I get the videos up there, maybe I'll go back and look at some older videos that I've loaded up. Let's say, for example, like this glass shader one's doing pretty well. Or well, there's another one that's doing quite well at the moment. Let's try and find that one for you. And we'll take a look at it quickly. It should be here somewhere. It shouldn't be too... You can see how much videos I've been creating, right? Lots and lots and lots of content. And this is good for your business as well because you can repurpose this content. All the videos that you create, you can share them on um social media this one's doing pretty well it's for um uh this particular video was for particle simulations right in blender it's a blender particle tutorial so you can see look blender particles let's try this one out sometimes the results in here don't necessarily reflect where they're on youtube but let's try um like this blender particles right if i copy this and paste that into the search you can see position two right you can see that and, and searches per month, it roughly does around 9,000 searches per month. So if people are clicking on this video, I'm getting traffic to that particular keyword. I know that here's another one of my videos as well. <clears throat> so that, and this is what all, in fact, all three of these are mine, to be fair, all three of these. So I've used a combination of this tag generator and then I've used a combination of TubeBuddy to go and add keywords or tags into here that are ranking pretty well in the search results. To be fair, search volume of like about 9.2K is not that massive on YouTube, right? There's videos out there that get like millions and millions of search results. Uh, that's good for them. If, 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 if uh, your business is about just doing content on YouTube and monetizing it, then you wanna get lots and lots of traffic onto your search results. But for me, um, I've got a website design business to run. The stuff I do on YouTube is in my own free time to share knowledge with people. That's what I'm doing it for. If it so happens that my video ranks high in the search results and I can monetize that and get a bit of money out of it, then, you know, that's a bonus for me. But more importantly, is sharing the knowledge and stuff like Blend Up, it's got nothing to do with website design, right? But I want to learn things new as well. I don't want to be doing the same. Thing. I don't want to sit for eight hours doing website design and then after i've done website design i'm going to sit here for another half an hour 20 minutes or an hour or whatever it is and make a youtube video about website design i've already spent eight hours doing that during the day do i really want to spend another hour making that content for youtube i could do that and in theory it should be a good thing for me to do because i'm a website design business i should be making content themed around website design so i will be doing that in the near future but i've been so busy with the web business building projects for clients that uh, kind of doing other things, learning other things is kind of uh, another way for me to sort of relax and gain some knowledge in some, doing something else. So, you know, I started Blender using Blender maybe six months ago. I knew zero about Blender and now I know a lot more about it. So if I want to do some creative stuff for my business, um, like 3D logos or animation work or anything like that for clients, now I've got that skill set to do that for my customers as well. So I can monetize on that knowledge as well. I can now sell that service to a customer. If you want like some animation stuff done in Blender, I can now offer that service to my clients. So it's a win-win situation, right? I win um, by gaining new skills and knowledge, which is important. I share that knowledge with other people, which I think is very important as well. But then I get a, a new sort of service that I can provide to my clients as well uh, to do with uh, 3D animation. I won't say I'm the best at 3D animation, but at least I've got some skill set and some knowledge about that. I'm pretty competent with Blender now. If you go to my YouTube channel and click on playlist, you can see I do a diverse range of tutorials um, on a wide range of subjects. Anything this is like Blender, you've got GIMP stuff here, GIMP image editing, you've got Google Chrome, you've got stuff on YouTube, you've got stuff on so here's that website design I was talking about. I haven't done much, right? So I'm going to start filling up this uh, part of my. Um, playlist with a lot of website stuff but you've got video editing you've got uh just basic tips and tricks videos you've got adobe stuff you've got all of this stuff you've got powerpoint and microsoft word and you've got a lot of stuff to do with um 
uh, bookkeeping that we just spoke about now there's quite a lot of videos there's about 500 in total on a mixed range of subjects um, all put into these different playlists which are categorized so it makes it easier for people to find your content as well so that's a good tip for you if you're making quite a lot of diverse content on your channel even if you're making something quite specific like just blended tutorials then try and put them into categories so you might do ones that are on particle simulation you might do ones that are on you know creating objects or remeshing objects or rendering and all these different things that you can do in blender for example you can put them into playlists that just makes it easier for people to find your content and the nice thing if you do it in playlists if you click on the home page then you can categorize things on your home page so you can see all blender stuff here you can see like all the playlists that i've created right uh let's go back here let's close that uh, and then you can see like popular uploads so these are all the ones that i've done pretty well quarter of a million views 200 almost 200,000 179,000 so some of my stuff gets quite a lot of traction this one here this google maps one um for whatever reason i found on youtube not many people have done very good google maps tutorials so i went and made one and it's done 86,000 views so that for me that's quite a lot in terms of youtube that's not massive but um you know for me it's pretty good 86,000 views spreadsheet tutorials try and be a bit diverse in terms of, in terms of your content not only for generating traffic for different types of um, visitors to your youtube page but you get to gain new knowledge as well right you get to learn something new as well and then you can monetize on that knowledge you can then offer that service i can now go and say to my client do you want a custom google map done go and watch my tutorial and spend 20 minutes and go and learn it yourself or pay me and I'll go and do that. I'll go and make that content for you because I know how to do the route planner. I know how to do a custom route planner. I actually did something like this for one of my clients. They were doing a charity walk. They're running like a little, they run a, a big company, but they wanted to do a, a little charity walk uh, project for their business and sort of like help to promote their business, but also do something good for charity, right? So they wanted to make a route plan of where these people are going to be walking um, on a Google map. So I said to them, look, you can watch my tutorial and you can go and do it for yourself or I'll charge you X amount of money and I'll make that, that Google Map uh, route planner for you for your charity walk. And they paid me to do it. They, they don't have time to do that stuff. They don't want to sit here, learn, spend 20 minutes learning it and then trying to implement it to gain all of that knowledge and do that. Uh, so I gave them options, right? Go and watch my tutorial or I can uh, show you that I, I know how to do it and then I can do it for you at a fee. And they'll rather pay me to do that. So it's a win-win situation, right? So sharing knowledge is good. Optimizing your content is even better. So use these rapid tags, tag generator, to get some nice keyword or keyword tags. And try and incorporate those tags into your uh, descriptions on your YouTube, into your description and your written content. And get those tags into here. And get a good thumbnail. This thumbnail was really, really simple, right? It just said Blender and it showed some particles. So sometimes simple thumbnails will work well in YouTube. You know, a very, very simple thumbnail will do, do you justice because it's, um, it's, 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 it's quite inquisitive, right? People want to click on it and find out what it's all about. Well, I'm looking for Blender, I'm looking for particles, but this thumbnail is very, very basic. But at the same time, um, it's, uh, it's, it's enticing for people to click on it. It just raises their curiosity when they click on it, right? So this, this video is doing pretty well. It's done quite a lot of views. And I expect it to, to continue doing more as well. So we mentioned another tool here. We mentioned Rapid Tags and we mentioned TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy, I'm going to do a separate tutorial explaining how to use that software to optimize your videos and search for tags and, you know, make better content and make better videos here. Here you can see TubeBuddy working as well uh, to give me some relevant keywords or keyword tags uh, that I can place in here and then also in my title and um, the description as well. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCPWare tutorial.